show out of Oman. Um, sir, these comic heroes have been a fantastic hit, but are they working? Uh, yes, I believe so. The biggest threat we face in the Middle East is terrorism disguised as heroism. This is what they're promising uh, the youth. The ultimate message of ISIS and Al-Qaeda is this, mm. come be a hero. Our, our message, unfortunately, has been don't be a terrorist. So obviously it's a lot more attractive. In a recent uh, film done by a Norwegian filmmaker, Dia Khan, that was just recently published, uh, there's an interview with, with a former terrorist fighter, and he says, explain it, he explains in it that the reason he joined is because it offered him a heroic journey, a journey that f provides him with a sense of purpose, mm -hmm. sense of identity, mm -hmm. um, um, and a, a sense of belonging. Mm -hmm. So we need to counteract, uh, I'm to counteract that. We need to show the youth that hero this is not real heroism. Mm -hmm. Heroism is based on connection to others, service to others, on positive uh, narratives such as mm -hmm. hope and resilience, not narratives of hate and violence. I know, Suleiman, that uh, you belong to what are a new generation of Arabs that includes the likes of Bassem Youssef, um, uh, for example, the Egyptian satirist. I spoke to him on this show this time uh, last week and asked him why he believed um, that uh, satire, as far as he is concerned, is a powerful tool, a powerful weapon. This, this view is, uh, and Suleiman, is what he said. Uh, uh, and I think uh, satire is an incredible weapon because basically, it, it, uh, it takes down this kind of fear from the hearts of people. And when you take away the fear, they are, uh, through laughter, they are not scary anymore. So uh, satire is a very, very great weapon. The, that's Bassem talking to me. I know you agree with what he says. But Sullivan, Jordanian youngsters are still slipping across the border to join the fight against Bashar al-Assad. Granted, many are horrified by what they find with these extremist groups and are coming home. But the reality here is uh, that more still clearly needs to be done. So what happens next? Sure, a lot more needs to be done. In Jordan, government polls show that 7% of Jordanians above 18 years old identify that ISIS and Al-Qaeda and other groups actually represents their views. That's approximately, 7%. Yeah, that's approximately 225,000 people. Mm. Now, the good news is uh, there's approximately, the official numbers are 13 to 1,500 the people who actually end up going. Mm -hmm. So the numbers are still small, but it is still one too many, in my mm. opinion. Mm. Uh, so obviously, a lot needs to be more. It's a lot more cheap, it's a lot cheaper to actually do preventative work. And this is the problem. We need to focus from a hard security lens into a soft security approach. We need to address the counter narrative, but it's not enough just to tell the kids, don't do this, don't join mm -hmm. ISIS. What are we for? Mm -hmm. And this is where we fail big time. We gotta be for something much more attractive. What are we offering these youth? And that's where we fa fall heavily short. Governments overall are actually for mm -hmm. uh, heavily short. Now, the important thing is governments alone can't do this job. I believe the role should be in to enable civil society and private sector to really engage. We can operate in real time. Mm. We can uh, connect with the youth on a level that the governments can. And any nar counter narrative that comes from a government, unfortunately, it gets discredited right away. We need to engage the youth too. This is incredibly important. Not just on counter messages.